Hi, how you guys doing? And welcome back to Trails of Cold Steel with me, your girl, Mill Fuses. Uh, last time we were running through this dungeon and now we're finally going to fight off the freaking, uh, new Ted Allard thing after I rest. Because apparently, I don't know if I already did it in the last video, but I'm going to do it again just because I'm, I wasn't sure. Alright, and with that, let's get to it. If you guys like this video or this series, then please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. I feel like he's going to be weak against fire. I'm betting that's the monster we need to take care of. It looks like a gigantic crocodile. It seems pretty vicious too, and this area doesn't have very good fitting either. We'll need to make sure we're fully prepared before we engage it. I'm already fully prepared. This is our opportunity to put our combat to the test feet. Right. This one's dangerous. Stay on your toes. My turn. All right, we need to get rid of the little friends first. Yeah, but I know fire and earth is what they're weak against. Fire and earth. All right. Ooh, dang. I guess in this heat wave again. Wait, does she have any... No, oh, she has spark arrow. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm gonna drive. Arcus, activate. Hey, you missed. Yeah. My turn. You swap you. Or sorry, can you handle this? I'll take care of this. I can't. Are they not already linked? Yeah, there we go. Target lock. Here we go. There. God dang. <gasps> no! Already? really gunning for her. But can she use her? No, she can't. I need to get rid of these little guys first because they're so annoying. 
Arcus, activate! God dang. Arcus, activate. She has yet been able to attack once you because she's being hit so hard. Right. Finally she gets to attack. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, does she have any herbs? Well, she has Firebolt, but... Shatter! Now! Okay. Here we go! Uh... Huh. <laughs> Toasty. Mmm, the smell of cooked fish. I need to move her out the way because I really feel like I'm about to get hit by a lot, and I don't want to be a part of that. It's my turn. Hang in there, everyone. You have my face. God My dang! She just keeps getting destroyed. I still need to get rid of these little ones, but she's a crap this time. That was a lot. There. My turn. Here. I hope to blind you. I might have to switch it up. Maybe. Let's just see how it goes. Hang in there, everyone. Thanks. Go. My turn. I don't want to use a big one for this. I really don't. There we go. Right. How about this? Now. Yeah, it looks like I might get this done. In one go. Oh no, you don't. Oh what? Oh, snap! Ring blocked it. Okay. Nice. Um, let's do sweet. I gotta get her out the way. She was, she's getting fatter this entire battle. No, no, no. Leave it to me. Arcus, activate. Won't give up. Arcus, activate. Of course.
<laughs> I don't want to hit him accidentally. I don't think it's possible in this game, but I don't want to risk it. Earth Pulse. My turn. Oh yeah, that move comes in handy in tight spots like this. Maybe I should attack him to see what happens. Ah, uh, it didn't take a lot. Let's do this! Leave it to me! Okay. Target locked. Man, it is not taking a lot. See? Okay, you missed. I was about to say, like, don't come after my girl now. Shatter! Off guard! Still not enough, though. Marcus, activate. My turn. Hmm. Come on, take a big chunk. God dang it. Still didn't take any. My turn. I got some health back, so that's good. It's my turn. Marcus, so we're just going to ring around the rosy for the tax, huh? Let me just straight up attack you. Uh, still not a lot. Just gonna slowly chip away at you. Ow. Oh crap. You need it more. It's my turn. Hang in there, everyone! Thanks. You have my face. Right. Okay. Target locked. Now. An opening. All right. Dang! You missed? How do you miss? Oh, yeah, I mean, these aren't gonna work because oh, I have to out for the count, so I can't use them. Leave it to me. Hang in there, everyone. Here we go. Okay, you see these. Good. 
Who needs it the most? It is herself. No. Goo. Right. I was hoping that wouldn't happen, but how about this? Right. I'll wait after that turn. Ooh, ow. Oh, thank you. Don't miss again. Thank Here's you. Gotcha. Right. Thanks. Right. How about this? Go. Go. We are so close. You missed. <laughs> Yes. Here we go. I'm sorry I'm not talking this way. I'm just like super concentrating on this right now. Right. Shatter. Go. Yeah, get you up for the count now. There. Ooh. It's my turn. How about this? Now, please. yeah, rush him. Right. Do it. Ha. Ha. Here we go. There. Ha. Go. Got you. Right. Is this it? Final strike? No, it's not the final strike. Ooh. Right. But this would be the final strike. How about this? Bam. Alright, let's keep moving. Nice. Yeah, I was concentrating so hard so I wasn't saying as much. I do apologize. I can't believe Fee died though. I was like, man, I thought, because I thought, um, Laurel was gonna die. Because she kept getting her ass beat. Like, they just, they were going after her so hard the entire time. I had to make her, like, run, run across the field before they finally, like, took their eyes off her. <laughs> I did it! <laughs> I've only just begun. Yeah, Success. everybody levels up. Mm-hmm. Scud Ripper can now be used. My faint KO 30% strikes. Amy's weak points. I'm bouncing for the nice. I did it. Where's your special move at? <sighs> Whew. We did it, just Fee. Hmm. Laura and Fee high five each other. Uh -huh. It's hard to believe that not even 24 hours ago, you two still weren't getting along. The two of you really do make an amazing team, though. The two of you coordinating your attacks, I don't think anything stands a chance against us. No. The monster clearly had the advantage as far as brute strength is concerned. If we didn't have the superior numbers, I doubt we would have been emerging victorious. Yup, we still got room for improvement. The thought of you two getting any stronger is kind of terrifying. What's wrong? Nothing much. It's just seeing those two got me thinking I'm going to need to strengthen my own resolve soon too. What do you mean by that? Don't worry about it for now. Anyway, we ought to get back and give our report. Very well then. 
and we're done with that. Now let's head back to the points. Oh no, what's happening? There's a cutscene. Hmm? Is something the matter? Oh, I didn't notice this before, but does anyone feel a slight breeze in this area? Wait. This way. Are we about to see another hidden tunnel? You think this is like the passage we found yesterday? Hmm. So there's a secret passage here too. If so, I imagine it probably opens like the last one did. Maybe this leads to somewhere else in the capital then. No way to know for sure until we open it. I suspect as much. Hmm, I wonder where this leads. It's hard to be sure we lose our sense of distance to location traveling underground like this. But if I had to guess, I'd say we're heading in the direction of... Maybe there's an exit close by. Alright, let's try and make our way outside. I wonder where we're about to be- oh my god, are we about to go someplace super important? And then getting ourselves into more trouble? Oh, there's the exit! Oh look, another resting there. spot. That's such a good sign. Not. It's gonna throw me into another battle. I'm really hoping not. Because I feel like we're about to pop out at a very important place where we're not supposed to be, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, we're back here. I know where we are. Hmm. Hey, isn't this where we came out the locked door that was in the other part of the city? This is where the Mr. Tittle's mission was. The fiercest cat in town. We seem to have emerged in Osh District. Moxie's home is here, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, I had no idea that underground passage went all the way from Portsea here. That never of tunnels beneath the city really does seem to cover a vast area. It's like something out of a spy novel. I'll say. Maybe it's a sign. Was that? Hmm. That must be the time to mark the noon hour. Yeah, that's Heimdall Cathedral, though. The ca cathedral itself is pretty far, bleh, far away <laughs> over the same district, but you can hear it pretty clearly even here. Well, I think it's about time we found something to eat. How about we order to go from one of the local shops? And we don't really have much, but I am happy to at least treat you to a cup of coffee at our house. What? You, you mean, Machius, you're inviting us into your home? Because he seemed like he didn't really want to at first, but now he's like, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put you guys in the house, okay? They decided to grab some fish and chips to go from the nearby pub. With their meal in hand, they headed to Machius' house to enjoy lunch with a good cup of coffee. Mmm, coffee. Ah, so this is the capital's famous fish and chips. I was expecting it to be delicious, but even still, I'm impressed. Yeah, that pub is supposed to be pretty well known for their fish and chips. I'll admit it tastes good, but at the end of the day, it's still greasy comfort food. Better better eat it while it's hot. It tastes disgusting if you let it cool off. I hate food like that. 
tastes awesome but then they're like oh yeah we have a to go option now take it home you take it home it just tastes disgusting because it's it's cooled off oh my god i hate that probably still better than wartime rations though haha <laughs> what food is it this coffee seems pretty high class though it's got a nice rich fragrance do you buy your own beans and grind them at home yeah, it looks like my father went out and stocked up not too long ago. Now and then he gets the chance to take some time away from his duties and come relax back here. He sees his coffee as a small island of luxury in his hectic daily life, I think. Haha, <laughs> that does sound like something I could see Governor Regnant saying. Hmm, he seems like quite a respectable man to me. You'd hardly imagine a man like him belong to an important official like the Imperial Governor. It's tiny. You know, Fee, it wouldn't hurt to be a little less blunt. Haha, <laughs> no worries. As I said, my father and I are commerce through and through. He might be a top official, but neither of us really saw that as a reason to change our whole lifestyle. Besides, it's not as though we don't have some attachment to this house. Ah, right. It does seem like a comfy place to live in, though. Really cozy and relaxing. Ooh, there's a photo. Let me guess. We're about to get into the backstory. Let me guess, your mom died. <sighs> oh, that. Ah, oh, he's so pretty. Look at cute little Machias there. He looks like he had such a sweet disposition. Yeah, before he grew up to be a stubborn old nag. Stop nitpicking people's old family photos! Honestly. The governor looks the same as ever, though. Is that woman next to him your older sister or something? Dang. Close enough. She was a cousin on my father's side of the family. Since she lived quite close, she often came to visit. Oh, she's the cousin, not the mom. Okay. Now, her family was just my father and I, so having her around was a big help. The way you speak about her seems to imply you no longer see her. She did. Did she get married and move away? Here it comes. She died. See? I knew it. I'm not even surprised anymore. The only difference that you guys made of this, instead of it being a parent, it's now just another important person in his life. It's his cousin that he saw all the time, and now she's dead. Okay. <sighs> the trend continues. You only changed one little detail. Around six years ago. Oh. I see. And that has something to do with why you hate the nobility, right? Probably. <sighs> so... I never really planned on telling anyone about this. But considering all we've been through, I suppose it's time I told you a little more about me. It's a long story, but... Would you hear me out? It's not like I can give me a choice, but of course we'll hear your backstory, Machias. Of course! Hmm. Absolutely. Glad to. Thanks. Sis was nine years my senior. Beautiful, kind, to me, she was in every sense the ideal woman. Now, as I said earlier, we're a family of commoners through and through. But my father proved to be a very capable government official. And eventually he was promoted to an important government position started to make a name for himself. Honesty and integrity are a core part of his work ethic. So, of course, he made his fair share of enemies. <laughs> I but bet. But after seeing success in a number of major projects, he gained a reputation both inside and outside the... My mother died when I was still young. See, she's dead too. I, I knew it. They, they didn't mention it, but I was just like, wait for it. There it is. The parent's dead too. But Sis happened to live around here and ended up helping us in more ways than I can count. I was about to say, didn't you say that was your cousin? But that's probably like a sister to him, the closest thing he has to a sibling. So I'll let that slide. Since she was his niece, my father always made a fuss over her. And even though she didn't live in the same house, she was like a real sister to me and a real daughter to my father. And I was always so proud of her. As a child, she was practically my idol. As you'd expect, she had countless admirers among the men of the city. 
but for all her popularity, she was always level-headed and sensible. So I never felt I had anything to worry about. Uh-uh. Until he appeared. He was one of my father's subordinates at City Hall. Though unlike him, he was a noble by birth. A man of high rank, too. The heir of a count. However, he had none of the arrogance or haughtiness one usually associates with the nobility. When I met him myself, he came across as an honest and loyal man. He met Sis when Dad introduced him to her one day. And eventually, the two of them fell in love and began a relationship, despite the difference in their social status. As a child, I was frustrated beyond words. But even I had to admit that the two of them made a good couple. And Sis seemed so happy when she was with him that I had no choice but to let it go and accept their relationship. Time went on and they became engaged with Dad acting as the go-between. And that's when everything started to fall apart. His family couldn't have been more blatant in their attempts to undermine the relationship. Good God. Apparently, one of the four great houses, House Cayenne, proposed an arranged marriage on short notice. Wow, that is so freaking petty. And the Count's family were up in arms at the thought he might choose to take a mere commoner as his wife. Since my father held an important post, they were limited in how shamelessly they could try to sabotage the marriage. But they began to harass and threaten her in secret every way they could think of. It made her life a living hell. Maybe she didn't want to cause trouble for the man she loved, or perhaps she did it out of consideration for my father. But all that time, she chose to endure it alone. She never discussed it or asked for help. And finally, it became so crushing that she took her own life. Oh my. It was only afterward that my father and I learned what had really happened. It seems that at the very last, he had chosen to betray her love for him. But I told her, he said. I told her I'd treasure her as my mistress instead if she'd just accept that we couldn't be married. What? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Oh my god. Dude. That's probably what broke her freaking heart right there. She can probably go with these like, as long as you love me, I can go through all this BS that your family's made me go through. But if you tell a girl, I'll love you as my mistress instead, even he said, I'll marry this other girl, but I'll love you as my mistress. You know, no girl wants to hear that she's going to be a side dish. No girl wants to hear that crap. And that's probably why she was like, you know what? I'm out. I just don't understand it. Why would she take her own life? Really? You, you, you don't understand it? Okay, let me educate you for a minute. Yeah. Beat his ass. <laughs> After that, my father seemed to redouble his efforts. It was like watching a machine kick into high gear. With the help of his ally, Chancellor Osborne, he was able to wrest control of City Hall from the noble faction. Then, four years ago, he was appointed to his current position as governor of Heimdall. I hope he ripped that man and his entire family apart. Just, just tear through them like tissue paper. And that's how the Regnitz family came to be where it is. I don't even know what to say. So that's why you started hating nobles? Yeah. I was so furious at Sis's death. My hatred needed to be directed at someone anyone. First I blamed her fiancé, then his family, then the family of the Duke who tried to intervene. In the end, I just hated the nobility as a whole. The people, their culture, the entire idea of social classes. I desperately wanted the strength to win against them, to show how right I was, how wrong they were. <laughs> They're just like, ooh, that's a doozy. Deep down, I knew the truth about my hate. I knew I was taking out my anger on people who didn't deserve it. People who had done nothing wrong. You did? <laughs> they may be from different social classes, but people are still individuals. Sis's fiance was faithful to her. 
he just wasn't strong enough to shield her from all that ugliness, despite his love. I, I don't think he loved her enough, is what I would say to this. I don't know what to say to that statement. I don't think he loved her enough. It, eh. No, no girl wants to hear that sentence comes out her man's mouth at all, period. Maybe in his mind, he must have thought he was trying to shield her from it. But no, that, that was like the final straw in her mind. Nah. And the Count and his family were only acting in their best interests, which is to be expected, really. Ultimately, I've had to acknowledge that not all commoners are good people, and not all nobles are unworthy of respect. Eusis might not have done much to change my opinion. But getting to know you two showed me that there are nobles who live up to that name. Machias. I have no idea how my father feels about all of this, but this is how I've come to feel. I see. You have my thanks. I'm glad you felt you could talk to us about it. Still, I don't think it hurt to be a bit more honest with yourself. If you're willing to admit all of that, maybe you can find it in you to be friends with Yusis too. Uh, not gonna happen anytime soon, buddy, but don't worry, they'll be best bros. Are you kidding me? I might accept that not all nobles are bad, but that arrogant, self-centered fool can go choke on a palm. Always mocking me for spending so much time studying or telling me I need to get out more. I don't think he goes quite that far. Besides, I don't think he does it on purpose. He doesn't mean any harm. That's the most irritating part! He does it without thinking! <sighs> well, that was a good coffee break, wouldn't you say? Yay! Machius now used the Escraft ultimate shot. At last, everyone has their S-Crafts. I think. I think. I think everyone has an S-Craft now. Well, lunchtime is over. It must be almost time for the summer festival decorations to start going up. Huh? I wouldn't have thought preparations for that would have started way before now. Is the summer festival not a big of a deal in the capital? It depends on who you ask, I guess. I've always just thought of it as one of those small earlier traditions. In my hometown, the summer festival is the most major event with extensive preparations. Perhaps those places where the ancient and mystic traditions survive put more effort into celebrating the fe festival. Hmm, and a museum does seem to have mostly vanished here. Not as much as rural crossbow though. Well, I suppose it's hard to think of it as a seasonal festival in the capital when it's celebrated a month late to begin with. I think most just see it as an opportunity to catch a glimpse of the imperial family. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, that makes sense. Hmm? Is that your Arcus ring? What's he doing ringing out here? This is Class 7 Group A, we sure to speak me. Hello there, Reen. This is Carl Regnitz. Governor Regnitz? Dad? Come to think of it, he did say that we'd be able to use our artist communications function in the city, didn't he? The group A's res representative, so I figured it'd be best to call you. So is now a good time? Uh, yes, now is totally fine. We actually just left your home, coffee invited us in for coffee. Haha, <laughs> did he now? I had a favorite specialty store of roast bills being just the way I liked them. It was top notch real, right? With all that's been going on, it was nice to just sit down and enjoy a cup of coffee. Well, I'm glad you were able to spend some quality time together. Anyway, getting to the point, I'm calling because we have a bit of a problem on our hands. That being the case, I'd like Group A to take care of the one additional task for me. An extra task? We can do that, sure. But what exactly is it you'd like, the, like us to do? There appears to be been a burglary at a jeweler's in the Garner District. But that's not all. The culprit seems to have left a message addressed to you. What? Your confusion is understandable. However, the jewelers submitted a report of the burglary to City Hall a short while ago. Normally, I leave this to the proper theories, but you would be willing to go and see if there's anything you can do. Uh, of course, sir. Well, I'll head over to Garden District at once. All right then, I leave this matter in your hands. What was that all about? Whatever it was, just seemed per perplexed. 
Well, wait till you hear this. Really explaining the particulars of the Governor Rand's additional task to the group. So a jeweler boutique with burglars and the car left a message addressed to us? Weird. Hmm. Though thinking about it, this all sounds kind of familiar. Yeah, now you mention it, I'm getting a strange sense of deja vu as well. I know, I was like, is it the same people that we met like in Crossbell that stole the, the all that jewelry and stuff? Is it them coming back for revenge? Still, it would have been helpful if my father could have furnished a few more details. Well, it's already past noon. Let's head over to the garden dish and find out what happened. We're going straight there. You teleporting me game? Re and the other members of Group A paid a short visit to Heimdall Port to report the monster. Okay, thank you for doing that for me, game. After doing so, they board a tram to the Gardner District. One additional field study test was added. Okay. Bus, are you gonna let me out? Wait, is it this? No, I really doubt it. Alrighty. The boutique, that's the hotel. I'm gonna need like some stuff though. Well, let me go and see what's going on with the mission first. Where is it? Is it this? I think it's this. Yeah, it's this. Excuse me, are you in charge of the store? We're here on the behalf of the local government to investigate a reported burglar. Yeah, yes, that's right. I'm the owner. You must be the students from Thor's Military Academy. Indeed, Class 7 Group A at your service. Oh, the goodness. We may yet have a chance to recover the Crimson Tiara. So, that's the object that was stolen? Yes, exactly. I'm in bed with priceless cardinal gemstones, capturing the hearts of all who gaze upon it. It's the centerpiece of our display, in consideration to become a national treasure and valued at those 100 million mira. Pretty pricey. Yeah, yeah, I'll say. It was being displayed in that big showcase in the center of the room, wasn't it? I heard the store was fitted with the best security system money could buy, so they could display the tears safely. <sighs> I'm afraid that was all due to my carelessness. There was no problem with our recent installed security system. The problem was me falling right into the Thief Bee's trap. Wait, the Phantom Thief Bee? I've heard all manner of rumors about him, but I still find it hard to believe this was actually his doing. The name sounds kind of familiar. Seems like Ellie and Marcus know of him. Yeah, he's a thief with quite a reputation in the capital. He calls himself a libertator of beauty. And he made quite a name for himself with a string of major thefts a number of years ago. He's even gained an enthusiastic fan following for the daring and graceful method he uses during his heist. Oh, now I remember what, where I've heard his name before. He's a thief who managed to steal an orbital tank from the Imperial Army, right? Yeah, that's one of his most famous exploits. Hmm, I seem to recall hearing that story myself. I wonder how one steals a tank. I know, right? How do you steal a whole tank? So... Do we know how the tiara was stolen? Phantom Thief B is well known for sending the victim a card notifying them of his intended crime before he commits it. Did he send a card this time? Yes, that's right. The card also contained this message. Your prized tiara has already been replaced with an imitation. However, that message was a feint. While we did have the utmost faith in our security system, we knew that if anyone could get past it, it would be him. We decided to open the display case to check the tiara, but as it turns out, that's what he was counting counting on us to do. Oh no! So that's when he stole the tiara, huh? I'm afraid so. Unbelievable. I assume you weren't able to get a good look at the culprit's face. Indeed, as soon as we opened the display case, the lights all went out. By the time we got them back on, the tiara had vanished. I see. Sounds like he's no ordinary thief. With a piece as valuable as this, can you maybe explain you, you decide we'd be the optimal choice for this request? Ah, uh, of course. Please take a look at this. I think I know who the thief identity id is, but I'm gonna leave it to myself to see if it see if I'm right. I'm not I'm not gonna say that in case I look stupid, but I think I know who the thief is. To the owner of this fine establishment. Know that I have the crimson tiara securely in my position. Should you fulfill my conditions, I promise that you shall be returned to you unharmed. If not, I make no guarantees. First you must not report this incident to the railway military police. Second, you must deliver the other 
other car here to the members of Thor's Military Academy Class 7 Group A. Third, the aforementioned Group A must overcome the trial within the said car, Phantom Thief B. It really is addressed to us. I find the thief's apparent villain in his crime somewhat unpleasant. Yeah, though on the other hand, he seems to be giving us a chance to get the tiara back. True. Do you have this other card that the thief mentioned? Of course, please take this. Salutations, ladies and gentlemen. On the Thor's Military Academy's Class 7 Group A, should you wish to recover the tre treasure you seek, accept and overcome the trials I have placed before you. All the keys lie within the Vermerial capital. The first key is... At the feet of the conqueror with the heart of a lion. A riddle, is it? It's that statue! I know exactly what he's talking about. But as far as the feet of the conqueror with the heart of a lion, it seems like a treasure hunt, and this card seems to be our first clue. It does seem that way. Um, so do you think you can help us out? We'd be happy to. Indeed, taunting us like that. I'm all for wiping that smug satisfaction off his face. Let's be off then. Thank you so much. Please find it. I know I can't afford anything in there. So there's no point in me going to the store. Where's that card at? Okay, let's see if I'm right. Oh, yep. The Conqueror of the Heart of a Lion. It couldn't mean anything other than the statue of Emperor Druckles. Agreed, it's hard to hear a clue like that and not immediately think of Druckles the Lionheart. And this statue is the most famous monument of him in Heimdall. Then chances are good that we're in the right place. The card said to look at his feet. Let's do it then. Oh, there it is. Here we go, it's the same type of card as the last one too. I assume we are correct then? But we won't know until we check. The second key is in the northeastern seat of the Prismitic Palace. Northeastern seat. The second key, so basically, we've got another scavenger hunt, so it seems. I can't believe he's making us go through this whole remoral. What can we do and play along though? In the northeastern seat of the Prismitic Palace. What could that mean? Alright, I'm a little clueless with that one, so we're gonna have to take some time looking around. Aha! Finally found it! Good god, this took me a minute to find. Jeez. This must be the Prismatic Palace. Yeah, all the signs point to the Crystal Garden. It's only the northeastern sea. I'm assuming it refers to an actual place where you can sit. Which would suggest we ought to invest with this bench in the northeastern part of the garden. Is that it? What does it say? Let's see. The third key is... At the round table were one were once rested the gauntlets that supported the east of the city. I'm really trying to write my brain where that could be. Oh goody, another riddle. Still, what can we do about but keep going? Ah, it seems fate has ordained that we should meet again. I recognize that voice. 
Oh god, I knew he was involved somehow. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Who are you again? He's Baron Blue Black. Yeah, we first met him during our field study in Barnhart, I believe. Trusbian, I'm most pleased to see that you have not forgotten me. Though if my eyes do not deceive me, you have two new faces among your throng today, no? Hi, it's uh nice to meet you. I've heard mention of you from my classmates. Has your search for beauty brought you all the way to Hindhall too? You could indeed say that. However, to me, not just in Fireheart, but among the pristic elegance of the Vermouth capital as well. Truly, it seems that we are bound together by destiny most inseparable. Would you not agree? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> He's a bit of the unique side, huh? Yeah, unique, let's just call it that. I couldn't sense him coming at all, though. Haha! <laughs> Please, the intensity of your stares is pausing withering. Or is it that my overwhelming beauty has clutched your heart so tightly that you cannot help but gaze in wonder? Mm. Oh, I bet all the mirror I have on me that absolutely not the case. Aha, now if you excuse me, there's still much I must attend to. I wish you the best of luck with your studies. And there he goes. Hmm. So what did he come to convey to us? With that guy, who knows? Hmm. Alright, on to my next clue. Upstairs. Is it this? Yes! Oh my god, yes, I found it. The gauntlet that supported the east of the city. The gauntlet is the symbol of the bracery goat, isn't it? It's on their own. Dude, I just searched around. I just went to place to place. <laughs> We're round tables. <laughs> it took me a minute. The once in east parts mentioned on the notes seem important as well. This building was once a branch of the guild, and while the capital once had two such branches, this is the easternmost branch. This must be the round table. Ah, here it is. I can't believe he even trespassed on our lodgings. Indeed, though from the look of things, he doesn't seem he touched anything else. I still not pleasant though. Yeah, it's kind of creepy knowing he was here, especially considering we don't know what he's actually after. Anyway, let's see what the next card says. The fourth key is on the bottom of the white burden of the steel bird perch on the water's edge. What? I'm really thinking white bird on the water's edge. So it's near water. Maybe the port, maybe? So sure enough, it's another riddle. And the rather challenging one at that. Alright, let's see where this freaking everything. I'm gonna suspect the port. He said by the water's edge, and that's the only place I know that has a lot of water besides the underground makes you run around for this. Oh, wait, is that it? Yes. The steel bird perched at the water's edge. Oh, they're talking about the crane. The last one seems like it might be referring to the crane here in the Heimdall port. And that would make it white bird in these containers. I can't see a card attached to any of them though. The clue did say it would be on the bottom. Hmm, perhaps we should discuss this with whoever's in charge and ask him to check the containers for us. That'd be the poor chief, Deberto. We met him earlier today, so let's see if he's willing to help us. He better, after we helped with that monster mission. I already 
you put it at the bottom where we couldn't get to it? How in the devil did that get stuck at the bottom like that? You wouldn't have been able to attach it without lifting the container, and that would have meant using the crane. But when did he do it? None of us ever knows anything suspicious. Well, he is supposed to be a master in disguise, right? Maybe he disguised himself as one of the workers here. I can only guess as to how he might have done it, but it's definitely not something a normal person can pull off. Yeah. That aside, who just- what does the card say? Oh yeah, let's see. Better not be another riddle. Ugh. The final key is also hidden near the water's edge. The crimson crown you seek sleeps within a black heart, nestled in the steel card that marches with the minutes. Let me read this again. The crimson crown you seek sleeps within a black art nestled in the steel card that marches with the minutes. Is he talking about the tram? The thing that's been taking us like everywhere? But he also said near the water's edge. Huh. I don't know. This one just as obtuse as the others. Though, if it's also hidden near the water's edge, from all the indication, I'd say the next one is here in Heimdall Port, too. It says Funnel Key and Crimson Crown, too, so at least there's that. Yeah, it looks like this is the last one. So it's still here, is it under an arc? So under a bridge? Maybe? Under an arc. Oh, and there's a trim right there. Is it right here? Yeah, I know, I just wanted to see how far I could go. Is it in here? Wait, what was that? I saw that. Okay, so I was right. This one wasn't far, so that's good. The steel car. My guess is that the last crew refers to the Orbital Tram. That seems like the best fit. Well, marching with the minutes. The tram schedule, of course, arriving and departing at present times. Heimdall Port is the starting and ending point for all trams in the city, so you could say the tram here is waiting for its appointed time. That makes sense. In a weird way, I guess this, this is the place then. Let's get the driver's permission to have a look inside. Excuse me, do you think you could do us a favor? Sure, what do you need? We explain the situation to the tram driver and ask permission to search inside the tram. The infamous fan thief hid something in this tram car? Yes, we believe that to be the case. Well, wow, really, well, I get where you're coming from. Go on, look around as much as you want. Thanks for your cooperation. Alright, we're actually in there. I thought I was gonna, like, make a search. How did he not notice that there was a big freaking black suitcase just laying on the floor? It looks like this must be the black art mentioning on the card. Our family appears to have taken no pains to hide it. Isn't it kind of weird that the driver didn't know? Exactly! He mu the driver must be the thief in disguise. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe Phantom Thief B left it here not too long ago. I wouldn't be so sure. Anyway, let's have a look inside. Inside the black case rested a tiara embedded with dazzling canals. It has such a fiery glow to it. Well, this is definitely the crimson tiara we've been running all over town looking for. So this thing's worth 100 million mirror. Go. <sighs> I'm almost afraid to handle it. Yeah, we gotta be really careful about getting this back to the tree of safety. Crimson tiara. <laughs> yeah, you accidentally break it on the way back. It's like, oh no! So the tiara really was in there, huh? See, the way he's hiding his face with his hat? Yeah, that's probably the thief. Now the last passenger who stepped off the tram was Phantom Thief B himself. I don't remember there being any unusual passengers on board, though. I see. So you have no idea who Phantom Thief B could have been, then? To have done so much and yet left no trace of his presence. He must truly be a master at covering his tracks. I'll say. But hey, at least we were able to get the tiara back. I suppose that's good enough. Nah, I bet money... Ring's not full. He's probably like, uh-uh. What's wrong, Ring? Why are you staring at me like that? I think it's time we put an end to this little charade. Don't you, Baron Blue Blanc? Or should I call you Phantom Thief B? What? See, 
I knew it. Like, Reen, Reen's got that sense. He, he just knows everything. He's like a freaking bloodhound when it comes to people he's trying to look for. Hmm. <laughs> this, this savory taste is why the unripe fruit is the most delectable of all. Wait, aren't you the Baron we met earlier? But that mask... That's the mask of Phantom Thief B. Allow me to introduce myself once again. I am Phantom Thief Blue Blanc, otherwise known simply as Phantom Thief B. His voice is more pompous than the one that I've been giving him this whole time. Oh my god. And Blue Blanc is but one of the many roles I have assumed during my pursuits. Incidentally, might I ask when you first discovered my true identity? It didn't really take much discovering. Went out of your way to show up in the Crystal Garden after all. True. Now, maybe it's just me, but I find it hard to believe you were seriously trying to hide your identity to begin with. And like I said, I knew this man was involved. Like the moment he showed up, I was like, it's you. You're the freaking thief. It's gotta be. This can't be a coincidence. Your disguises? Nothing short of perfect, I have to admit. But with all the work you've put into this, I suspected you might come check on us near the end of your little game. Ha <laughs> ha! I see! Excellent deductive reasoning! Simply splendid! But why would you do something like this? Why go to all the trouble? Ah, does that interest you? Must there be a motive? He's like, maybe I was just bored and then to do with my time for today. Hmm, maybe that was it. Nah. Now that we know your identity, there's nothing more to discuss. Theft is a crime. Indeed. A crime we will not allow to go unpunished. Oh, what spirited youths you are! What? How did he do that? <laughs> Just a little trick I like to keep up my sleeve. Regardless. You have provided me with plenty of sport and more than enough entertainment for one day. I'll be watching your future achievements with keen interest. Ladies and gentlemen, until we meet again, I bid you adieu. He disappeared again. <laughs> That's quite a little trick. Yeah, because they're just like... We've never seen anyone just teleport Might like that. Still be nearby. Let's search the area. We and the others scoured the area for Phantom Thief B, but try as they might, they found no trace of him. After reporting the details to the Institute City Hall, they tread back to the jeweler's note to return the tiara. I can't believe that you were able to curb the tiara safely. How can I ever thank you? I almost get the impression we're the reason you stole in the first place. Maybe you should apologize to you. Oh no, not at all. Fan Thief Beast conquests have always seemed rather conspicuous. I imagine you just, he just decided to use all of you as convenient excuse for his latest escapade. Given how fixated on us he seemed, I don't think that's all at all likely. Well, better not say anything. Indeed, the last thing we want is to call more confusion here. I'm afraid I can't offer you much, but please take this as a token of my thanks. Uh, yes, we will take that. This is a lot of supper. Are you sure it's alright to give this much? It also feels like more than we deserve. Well, this is a jewelry boutique. After all, we have more supper flying around than we know what to do with. Aha, uh -huh. well that does make sense. Thank you very much. Think nothing of it. It's the least I can do after all you've done for us. Alright, we've got all those goodies. What can I do with them? I think I have to wait until I get to... Yeah, I might wait till next time I can update it.
Whew, that was quite exhausting. Phantom Thief B was, un was even more unpleasant fellow than I expected. Annoying to think his smug face was watching us the whole time. Yeah, though his name is pretty well known around here. He was planning suspicious- he was planning suspicious even when we first met him. I didn't expect that he proved this much as a troublemaker. Something wrong with me? I was just thinking, he must be incredibly skilled. He disguised himself so well that he was virtually un unrecognizable. Not to mention all those other things he did. If this were material arts- Oh, if this were martial arts we were talking about, he'd definitely be at a master level. I can't agree. True. But why would someone like like that try to mess with us? He specifically asked for group A, too, though I can't imagine why. Hold on. Is it my father again? This is class 7 group A, really short speaking. Hello, hello! Sounds like you've been keeping yourselves busy. I know it's you, Instructor Sarah. Ooh, got it in got it in one. How'd you guess? Don't tell me. Is it your smoldering love for your tragic beautiful teacher? She always has hearts in her chest. That's how we know. I have uh many feelings about you, but love would be stretching it. In a way, you don't usually cause while we're almost field study. Is something wrong? Actually, there's somewhere I'd like group A to go. When you finished up what you have to do for your field study, I'd like you to head over to St. District. Okay, let's see. That's where Hymeal Cathedral on the embassies are, right? I think this is Canyon soon around there too. Yeah, that's the place. I want all of you assembled outside St. Ashtra Girls School at 5 o'clock. Group B will be there too. What? Don't worry, I've already informed the governor about this, so go ahead and enjoy yourselves. Anyway, have fun, toodles! Hey, hey, hold on! Uh, uh. What's wrong now? It sounds like our instructor is being her usual irresponsible self again. Pretty much, I don't know what she's thinking. Rina explained to the rest of the team that they were to assemble St. Astro Girls, Girls School by 5 o'clock. Oh, I know where that is. At Girls Canyon from Nobles, isn't that the one your sister attends? Hmm. I have a few acquaintances who attend there myself, but I can't imagine why she had us all meet there. Ghost Academy, huh? Kinda curious. I'm sure she has her reasons for ones, probably. It's almost evening, so we should finish up here and start heading over there. The best way to get to St. District is by tram, right? Yeah, doesn't matter where we catch the tram from, we'll pass through there. I almost tried to think what we'll have to do when we get there, though. The St. District has been added to the list of locations selectable from one of the capital's tram stops. Nice, so we can head over there. But I'll do that in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed all the running around this unexpected treasure hunt we had to go through. I I can't say I did, because I was really wrecking my brain for some of these riddles. I was just like, where in the hell could this be? I was like really thinking. But the last two, I think I, I was like, okay, water. <laughs> Where's the one place where just water? But yeah, um, we'll see what's going on at the girls' school. We're probably gonna see Rin's sister at least there again. Hopefully, I want her to come back in. Maybe she'll, oh, maybe she'll come back in and like introduce mm. the princess to us. That would be, that would be something. But uh, again, we'll see in the next episode. Uh, bye. See you later.